The Fallout series, among other games, tend to have a lot of weapons. Some of them are more unique or more powerful than others at the cost of a trade-off for their power, such as being one that uses more ammo and is a reward for a lengthy quest line, which would make them good as special tools to use on occasion, but what if you were forced to use one for your entire playthrough? Can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only the Pew Pew? The Pew Pew is a laser pistol variant that fires 5 rounds per shot and only holds enough in the magazine for 2 shots, meaning it will expend ammo at 5 times the rate, but the damage would hopefully be enough to make it worth using, though there is a bit of difficulty when going for the gun, which I will explain after I tell you my build. After draining Charisma, I put points into Perception to raise my energy weapon skill, Intelligence for getting more skill points from leveling up, Luck to raise all skills, and a little bit of Agility to fire faster and use Vats more frequently. I select Energy Weapons and Science as my tag skills, since Science can also let me recycle energy cells in case they are an infrequent find, and for my traits I select Wild Wasteland and Built to Destroy for some extra crit damage at the cost of weapon condition. After being released from my involuntary hospice, I make a mark on the world, trade with Chet, and hotfoot my way to the only place Pew Pew can be found at. I went through Sloan, up and down Black Mountain, through the West Vegas ruins where some soldier boys decommissioned some fiends for me to up my fit, then I made it to Sunset Sarsaparilla HQ. Normally, to get this gun, you would have to complete the Lucky Old Sun questline, which involves getting 50 Sarsaparilla star caps and then turning them in. Not impossibly, theoretically, as according to Game Banshee, there are over 100 star caps out in the wild, and you have a chance to get one every time you drink a Sarsaparilla. After I have just come off the heels of playing for a significant portion of time without a weapon, I decided to implement two ways of getting the gun without doing this quest. The first one being the quick save quit load method, where you press both repeatedly, sequentially, and arithmetically to hopefully phase through the doorway, but usually it works best when you go at it from a weird angle, but the most this did was make the frame rate of the game choppy. The second option is so much more secretive and arcane that few other players know how to utilize it. Yeah, you just console command the door open. I take the weapon, take the caps, loot several cases of soda, make my first kill and regain most of my spent ammo, leveled up and purchase the Black Widow perk since statistically most of the enemies you fight in this game are men. After I leave the building, it was time to start phase 2 of my plan, which is to figure out where to get some more ammo because I, as of currently, only have enough rounds to fire 18 shots or so. Also, at some point during this, I decided I should have the secondary objective of completing the Star Cap quest, so I will end up making several deviations to find them since I felt like it would be unfair if I didn't. I discovered Camp McCarran and the Gunrunner store, but they seem to be in the market for precious metal investments rather than energy products, so I sell my loot and continue to 188 Trading Post. While on the way there, I encounter a rare rock trader who bestowed upon me several laser seeds, and then ran into a prospector who dared to speak to me like that and paid the price for it. At the trade post, there was no ammo for sale, but in order to go where I really thought there would be some, I took the task to deliver a woman to her family's basement, and as thanks, was given access to the Brotherhood Armory, which against all reason and logic was devoid of such destructive facilitators. In the hopes of Night Torres having some spare energy cells stored in her special pockets, I agreed to look for her missing laser gun, but as I was about to leave, I remembered the barracks where I hop and skip away with a handful of ammo in each of them. Despite there being some fuckhead that can see through walls who felt like he was going to make this frustrating, it didn't actually affect what anyone thinks of me, which is fine, because I don't care about them beyond what they bring to the table, which so far isn't much. With now over 300 rounds, I went to the underbelly to continue my harvest, but the guy sleeping can now see behind him, which gets me killed pretty quickly. He can't detect me looting at any of the other ones except the last two on the side, but I feel like I have enough that I can stand my ground for a little bit. I set my sights towards Scorpion Gulch, blasting two of them before moving on, though I had a weird feeling, and my feeling was correct in that I was not playing the game on very hard. Progressing inwards, I take the fight to the Centaurs for a while, the problems of using this weapon making themselves apparent, as even if the damage can be inconsistent, though staggering, it seems to miss what should be direct hits. After the mutants were all dead, I leveled up and put points into lockpick and energy weapons, plus I finally realized I had the wrong quest active and this hole in the ground was not where the missing laser tag gun was. How I failed to notice I was not fighting scorpions the whole time is beyond me, though I guess they could qualify as scorpions due to the extra appendages and fucked up faces if you squint hard enough. I went back to Hidden Valley and reoriented myself into the correct direction, where a few corpses flared the area. Then I started to think the very hard was a very bad idea, as even after I managed to kill the rat scorpion, my intestines get exodiated by the venom in my newfound orifice. Immediately realizing I was outmatched but too stubborn to turn down the difficulty, I made some grocery runs but did not get any energy cells for sale. So I decided to go to Camp Macarena and enter the Strip. Then I went to Boulder City before going through Prim, saving some strangers and their XP from the Fuck You building by quickscoping their heads, and then sniping the bush wookies out back. At which point, I entered to blind the last two of science. Waste a shot in a bug, realized for the first time I can step on them to kill them, which I make good use of this information before claiming the star cap. Chug some drinks, watch some traders open fire at something at a distance, and got a job at the Mojave Outpost to blast some bugs with great efficiency before I leveled up again and picked the educated perk. 
Outside of Nipton, I witnessed an intense verbal exchange between two Redditors that went on for almost a minute until one rage quit, and then I gave the other the band hammer, then retrieved nine more star caps. Helped Oliver Swannock become part of the air he loved so much. Heard the tale of Volva Incontinent. <laughs> God damn it. Heard the tale of Volva Incontinent, and then spread it like cheese across burnt toast to the outpost. Went back to Good Springs to buy more ammo, including bulk ammo that, while being comparatively ass in terms of power and weapon condition, it should give me more damage going downrange. Back in Bug World on the hunt for the pistol, I took it slow and kept my ears, nose, and throat open, but nothing showed up on my radar. Found the pistol, looked around, seemed easy enough, but once I took it, the trap was sprung and the horde of arachnids was spawned to punish me. Yeah, it was like three bark scorpions. I killed the last one and tried to go back to the bunker. The next wave came after me, so I deleted them and then was cleared for takeoff. Returned the pistol to only receive something that I had no use for. Went to leave, but remembered something that would come in handy. Like I said earlier, with a high enough science skill, you can go to a workbench and recycle used energy ammo. But you can also anamorph ammo types into a different kind. With the fusion cells I found from the Dead Brotherhood Knights, I was able to go from 126 rounds to 438. With my stockpile renewed, I went to Boulder City and spoke to the cons. Leveled up and brought my energy gun skill up to 90 and bought the gunslinger perk. Once I had those, it was time for me to take the war to the NCR, and not a single fuck was given that I was shooting at anyone. Thankfully, once I made one jump like a snake and turned the other into stardust, the fight kicked off. Using my newfound allies, I ran behind the line so they could take the shots for me, though I made sure to land some hits for that sweet life essence, and then we all ran a bullet train on the final soldier. I was expecting to fight in the rest of the city, but there was only this guy by some wall. Enjoyed the atmosphere of the bar, went back to the outpost, and was really tempted to pick this dialogue option, but I held myself back. Remembered there was an entire energy weapon themed store in Freeside, and the salesman got a chance to pitch his brand while a fight broke out. Though as I should have expected, their supply of ammo that I needed was pithy, but they had a decent amount for display, though I didn't feel like dragging them all the way to the bathroom to steal them. Went to 1A8 to look for a star cap that should have been there, but I couldn't find it, though I did find one at the bar in Boulder City. Went back to Scorpion Gulch for some reason, but my gun did seem to kill them faster, and the tactic of walking backwards while firing was only slightly less than fully useful. Went to Prim to clean the streets, then clean out Nash's stock of batteries for my flashlight, of which he had none in the first place. In the Bison Steve Hotel, I took a few more confidants and witnessed a few more frustrations with his gun. Thought there was supposed to be a star cap in the gift shop, but I couldn't find one, though I did find one in the lobby. Found some more inside and around the General Nithin area. Fought and killed some of the rare wild mountain jackass, with some more spotted over yonder that got caught in a scuffle with the Legion. As I went to leave, I noticed I was being stalked by a pack of NCR hit people, so I went to blend in with greater numbers to give the illusion of strength, but they still set their sights on us. At first I waited to see if the Legion could actually hold their ground against the Rangers, but by the time I should have stepped in, one of the recruits had his head rolling down the interstate, and I was left to fend for myself. It was a slightly painful process with having to stick to cover, use meds, then fight without vats, but the fight was won and I had eight corpses worth of loot to sell. Thankfully I didn't actually need an NCR uniform in the strip, and then I went to the tops to wreak some havoc and almost died. Got lucky on the guy with a shotgun, then sniped Benny. Both his guards and his guards' guns were ineffective. Got the platinum chip and leveled up twice. I looted the place and eventually left the casino only to run into Volpez, who directed me to Cottonwood Cove. And just in case it wasn't apparent, I would be siding with the Legion this playthrough, mainly because I thought it would be funny for their savior to be the embodiment of everything they hate. A woman who uses technology and is also an unholy abomination that resembles the mutated offspring of Megamind and a dark elf. Had to shoot some zombies around Camp Searchlight. After reaching the Legion outpost, I went to clear out my inventory of items, got an invite from the NCR, spoke to Mr. House, which I didn't expect to get me kidnapped to spectate his Broadway play of Robots on Ice, though the show didn't end after I escaped the building either. Having remembered the sheer amount of ammo from Hoover Dam in my coin shop playthrough, I figured it would be worth it to use the NCR to my advantage for the time being. Bugged the Lucky 27 and leveled up where I bought the finesse perk. Inside the Hoover Dam offices, I was not behooved enough to them to gain access to the requisitions, so I went to the fort to speak to Caesar, then went to work to destroy the Securitrons in the bunker. I didn't have the skills required to disable the sentry bots, so I clipped my way through the door to see what happens, failing at least once, then started a self-contained robot war. Reloaded to save to try to escape, but I couldn't clip my way out, so I just backed out of the game to reload to save before I did that, which also got rid of the choppy frame rate once more. I destroyed the Protectrons, destroyed the generators, then had to escape, which since the sentry bots were unleashed, I decided to ignore them in the hopes they would go away and die in an explosion. I returned to Salazar to relay my success, and then was sent to divide the house. With the platinum chip in my possession, I apparently did not need to go to H&H &H Tools to get their Mr. House's basements. And yes, getting there was absolutely the hard part, as Mr. House's personal robots denied the reality of the metal armor I am sheathed in, causing me to die at an unprecedented speed. Running straight on in made no difference in the outcome. Using a stealth boy to sneak by and open up the terminal was also annoying, since the two robots inside can see right through me and one shot me with rockets. So I put that on hold for a while, bought some supplies, then went to engage with the boomers. 
waiting, just reset this little bastard's speech so I had to indulge his rambling, attended to the wounded, and I got an A for my effort, which as we know is what really counts. Did my best to politely borrow some ammo, but then I had an old guy start running at me with a hammer, so I went back in time, because we all know where that would lead. It took a bit of trial and error, but I cleaned up pretty nice. Went to clear out the ant infestation of the armory, and when Raquel told me that they explode, I figured she should have told me they had enough gunpowder packed into their assholes to sink a battleship. Thankfully it didn't kill me that much, I parkoured down, and saw the radio to play the finest yodeling that Slim Whitman had to offer to placate the pest. Made my way over to Helios 1 and convinced Lieutenant Haggerty I was there to help, got the materials, went back to the airstrip, leveled up, and picked the sniper perk. After all the prerequisites were done, I activated the Megalodon Easter Egg, then got swarmed after feeling a little bit big for my britches, so I made my escape to the watery depths where I felt like it would be safe. As it turns out, the Khazor rejects your reality and hunts your ass down regardless. Thankfully, I escaped the water and the bastards were condemned to a damp hell, but the landlubbers among them were still hard to kill because Vat seems to break and not target them despite having enough AP. I returned to Pearl and received her support for Caesar and then went to the strip to tell the NCR the good news, but was hesitant that the robots might be hostile, but the ones at the gate seemed okay with me. Though once I entered the strip, Victor wanted to say howdy to me by throwing hands in my general direction. Tested to see if shooting him would anger the other robots, but it didn't seem to, so I put Victor out the pasture. Seemed like a weird occurrence, but as long as it was a one-off, then that's okay. Except it was not a one-off, and it was not okay, because my world turned into a rave party from hell as the Securitrons attacked me, forcing me to try to retreat to safety before they destroyed me. I changed armors and took drugs to prepare for the fight, but I still got my health to drain, and taking cover behind a random civilian did not absorb the explosion. Ran around in serpentine while jumping to avoid the lasers and rockets to the next gate over. But when I got there, it was even more robots. So I took cover to heal and the game reminded me I was in NCR armor. So I ran to the embassy, which happened to be right there, while the soldiers ran to battle. With their stun batons, they could keep one of the robots knocked down while the rest moonwalked into action. Lasers kept shining while missiles struck the gate. I poke out the fire as best I can and use repair kits to up my damage. The NCR in the area do the best with what they have, but get gunned down as they get in the melee range. Caesar would be proud of them. The robots turn their attention back to me as the stunned one from earlier rejoins the battle. So I do a Texas 2 step to Texas 2 tap his shiny ass, and Lady Luck slaps her ass in my direction as I kill the remaining robots with the shunned message ringing the death bell. I take a gander at the carnage left behind in this battle and see how all are equal in death. Then I get shaken down by someone who placed the blame wrongly on my shoulders, but in the coming days he will get what's coming for him. And with that, the strip war arc has been concluded. I tell the crockpot that the boomerangs will come around, and the jackass had even more to say to me, which sealed his fate even harder. I make my way back to the Lucky 38, and the rest of the Securitrons have been decommissioned to varying degrees of animation tendencies. Back in the house's house, I do a bit more damage this time, while also making use of cover. Getting flanked makes things more annoying, and Vat screws me over. Almost died, turned one of them against the other, but more rather turned him against everything, and on the last one in the room, I decapitate his dongle. I'll have to deal with the last two unicycles in this clown show, where vast percentages mean jack shit, but I do scramble the circuits of one, which forces a stalemate that I can finish them off while they carpet bomb each other. I summon the withered remains my first Tamagotchi to put out his misery, though super focused light particles are a mere suggestion until they aren't. Back in the embarrassery, the big kahuna wants me to meet some royalty to try and get them in the good graces of Smokey the Bear or to put Pacer in the dirt. Bought some medical supplies to resupply after the war effort, and gave the doctor several truckloads of ammunition in exchange for soda tabs. Made the runs over through Chet and Doc Mitchell and Good Springs before going back to the fort, where I realized my mistake before I even died. Redressed myself and admired my creation. Went to speak to Caesar that the bomb squad breeze will blow in our favor, but I guess my voice made his brain hurt so I left while the NCR somehow heard of my shenanigans, which places a detour on my purification mission of the Mojave, since I was banking on Hoover Dam selling enough ammo to make sustained combat a viable option rather than a one-sided attrition. In the freest side of Vegas, I tossed some coins to my pacer to speak with the King of Kings to sort out the streets, but first I needed some more ammo, so I went over to the Silver Rush to buy some crumbs of ammo then take a job from them as their personal TSA stand-in, when the man of what's about to be my next hour approached. So I could pin his death on the Vandergrafts, but before I could take out Simon, the crier from across the street came to spit fire in my soul. To boost sales at the store, I sought to give them the reputation of the most welcoming business in town, when one man couldn't contain his excitement and set off some fireworks to celebrate our success. The sole survivor was about to take paralegal action, but he didn't say Simon says first. I loot the ammo and corpses, then happily walked my blue ass all the way to Mick and Ralph, where neither of them had enough caps to trade with, so it was back on the road to the runners of guns where I had to place some items in the designated secure storage container for valuable objects, then eventually made some bank. Went back to the strip and had my retina retained by a professional working her stuff. Then followed my quest marker blindly to the embassy, where I was given the optional objective of talking to someone else if I couldn't get the kings to speak peacefully. I didn't have any psycho and I couldn't find any around, so I couldn't spike Pacer's pacemaker for any piece of peace. 
So I cranked out the whole damn mission and settled things peacefully in Freeside. Leveled up twice thanks to the here and now perk. And the king told me he'd back off, so I went back to Crocker. My only option to him is, is that I have to talk to either of the colonels. So I went to talk to Gazuntite. Back in Freeside, I go to the kings and notice an odd sight. I guess they're starting to hang out a bit now, which is a neat touch of a dynamic world, though the interior was a bit crowded. I reiterate my demands for peace or else, and Pacer decided to think that the or else in that statement applied to me and not him. The king had nothing much to say about what just happened, so I set the stage for a final farewell to this shithole, and then completed enough of the NCR's quest to buy from the Hoover Dam Requisition Office, and oh boy, it was a gold mine. Several hundred rounds of every type of energy ammo is up for grabs, so I make sure to get as many as I can, going back to Good Springs to change them into energy cells, and then bringing myself up to enough ammo that I no longer have to mention when I get more. To celebrate the occasion, I went out for some fine dining, but the course that they needed to prepare was free range instead of medicated. I went downstairs to clear up the misunderstanding, then returned Gunder's son to the lobby. Found the prime cut of Longpig, and then convinced him to give the raccoon reach around a try, so he dove right into the dumpster to wait for me. Went back to Morticia, who told me to check up on the situation after dinner, so I went to take my seat, but wasn't quite dressed for the occasion. Waited for a while, longer than I should have. Time passed, and nothing went down in the dining hall, but I guess I succeeded anyways. Wanted to pass a speech check in Caesar's tent about his stuffy nose, so I decided to go hunting to boost my stats. While out and about, I stumbled onto some fiends that at first I killed pretty easily, but I didn't want to be on low health or healing supplies, which ended up catching me in a bit of a loop of either trying to kill them without getting hurt or getting hurt too much and dying as a result. Eventually I learned that despite being a visible concentration of photons, it does not immediately give away your position, so with a reliance on vats, I killed them all and got a loot box that I haven't bought the steam keys for so I cannot open it. Marched on and killed a few more fiends until I wanted to see what was cooking, hit the 30 second button on my microwave a few too many times and watched the cookie crumble. Made a mess. Walked until a bomb went off, reloaded to save, found the cunt kennel and took the sniping the canines, but got swarmed and then sniped myself. Went wide around and got a few kills which let me level up, where I put points in the medicine and then I bought the meltdown perk, which causes enemies killed by my energy gun critical hits to collapse into a raging mess on Twitter. Sniped another dog, which got the attention of Madame Magenta, then it blasted her head with vats, thinking she wouldn't die that quickly. Killed another Poochie, who went kaboom. Looking at her course, revealed her head was more damaged than it was already, so I went back. Gave her two-thirds of the Mozambique treatment out of order. Then finished her off before taking a souvenir. Went to Camp McCarran, and while AFK, witnessed the NCR squat drills in action. Went to the head case to turn in my cabbage harvest for a pretty penny, and then had one more left with a bonus in store if his head was intact. Out on the streets in fiend territory again, I dust off some druggies and search for the last boss in his rundown construction site, getting a two-for-one special and buy-two-get-one combo deal on dead fiends. Soon the rest were running up to me with Putt-Putt-Pat leading the charge himself, but I got him with a hole-in-one. Went to retrieve his head, but I guess the contract forgot to mention no disintegrations, so I got a one, two, three strikes before knocking him out of the park, along with his friend. I think it's also where I realized that explosions happen on all kills with energy weapons now, not just criticals. Went to get graded on my homework and passed with flying colors, then used my allowance to make like a squirrel and buy some more powered nuts to store for the winter. I returned to Caesar to diagnose him with explosive scolitis, which will have to be treated when he feels like it has the most dramatic plot timing. So in the meantime, I need to destroy the Brotherhood of Steel. So I went to Hidden Valley and sent Paladin Ramos to the stars, melted a knight and fleeing initiate before getting bitch slapped by a Gauss rifle. Went to the heart of the hood and the elder told me to cut it out, so I cut him out of this dimension. Then turned to take on the door guards while taking cover behind the sliver of metal, almost dying, and then detonating the second guard. Turned hardened in the heart out, taught the scribes a lesson they won't forget, then spread hell through the rest of the building. While I could have attempted to activate the bunker self-destruct, I would still have to make my way to Ramos, plus the fact I didn't buy all these bullets to just not use them. This hallway made things more difficult as the turrets in the building are too powerful for my hairdryer to do anything to while they can air fry my ass to extra crispy, though I can still take out a few people before one launches my soul out of my body. Saw so refuge in the bathroom until trying to paint got my melon evaporated. Used turbo to speed run down the hallway before the turret noticed me, then did something that would get me put on a watch list if I'm not on one already. Leveled up and put points into science and medicine. Spent way too long trying to kill this thing while that's fucked me over. Remembered there was a terminal in Bramos' office, so I stumbled my way over to him and saw my science wasn't high enough. Went back for some reason to level up again, but my points still wouldn't be high enough, so I escaped the bunker to go search for every Eater's Digest on computer life hacks. Ran all over the wasteland to every vendor I could think of who could possibly sell a science magazine, but mostly ended up buying more stim packs or selling my loot. Looked up on the wiki to discover the mayor's office in Nipton had two of them just laying around. Then back to Good Springs to retrieve a stealth boy. Back in the bunker, I head down the stairs to be greeted by a power armor wearing piece of shit that can launch me across the room while my gun had changed settings from suck to blow. Eventually got lucky enough to kill her, then after some careful deliberation, I picked a very appropriate password to turn the turrets to my side. Gave Ramos a little bit of a trim off the top, 
then went to witness the party, and was waiting to see if my kill counter went up. So when it doesn't, I'm pleased to say that I haven't failed yet. Went downstairs to kill the final two soldiers, and then got killed mid vats Joined the fight properly the next round by killing the retreating persons. And then employed the final person, and that was it. Checked my missions, and I guess I still had to destroy the bunker completely, which I guess makes sense, so I still looted everything of value, them, and then walked into the door for over an hour. Left to try to make some bank, but got mugged by some sentient silverware, and aside from the cinematic death cams, I didn't have much to show for the fight over the course of several minutes, until I finally resisted my loot goblin instincts enough so I could draw my loot, and shot two other weapons out of their hands, so I could get some distance from the Gatling lasers, and could focus on the ones with more precise triple toaster rifles, but I still had to use more needles than a street corner heroin addict. With the aid of a dead tree, I was able to waste a few shots and finish the fight like that green guy once said to do. Put my spoils into a rock for safekeeping, then made the rounds. But once I went back to get the rest of them, I was attacked by another squad of tin cans. One of them whose course went Chernobyl two inches from my nostril, so I had to do the fight again. And with a little bit of roundabout and keeping my distance, it was sorted out just nicely. Inside the bunker, I knocked the head sock off one. One downstairs tried to pull the acting insane while naked to scare off the intruder card. And then when I finally killed Knight Torino, my mission was complete and I had even more loot to sell. Little Caesar invited me to his pizza palace, where he informed me that he had some kind of condition I couldn't quite pronounce. So I went back in time to swallow drugs to avoid customs, then waddled my way over to the big boy tent before the condom in my stomach ruptured. Combine this with my level up, and while I got promoted to head pediatrician, it still wasn't enough to save the big cheese. So I went to get some advice and a set of kitchenware from an actual doctor that she wrote down on a sticky note and then worked my way over to my least favorite places in the game. Because I wanted to get a little more action, but by the time I was there, done with the geckos, and set the cells of the ghouls down to train a chain of reactions, I really just wanted to be out of there. So I went back, read a book, then told Salami to breathe real deep, then removed the tumor that was giving his brain a hug before giving him a Flintstone gummy vitamin for being a big boy. To celebrate such a victory in preserving life, it was only correct that I take one of greater value. The president of the NCR was coming in to mourn his own death that he does not know about yet. With my newly acquired medical prowess, I restored functionality to some of the bombardiers, then did a little more tinkering to make some extra spicy bullets. Traveled to the ranger station and got instantly wasted despite being disguised. Went to Bo... 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 What the fuck? Oh god. Went to Boulder City to walk my way to Cabo Horticulture who snazzed up in the blink of an eye. At the dam, I was warned not to get too close to the rangers as they would sniff me out. Yet when this one went hostile, he didn't actually attack me so I wasn't sure what to think as everyone else seemed okay with me. I went up to the tower to relieve the sniper of duty, then went to go back to talk to Cato Sicarius, but the ranger from earlier opened fire. I reloaded the save and waited since I thought it wouldn't take long for the bird to show up, though it didn't seem like that would actually happen. I tried luring Steve and Blue over to a dark alleyway so I could stick them with a light speed shiv. When I did, I reassumed my role as park manager, then when going into the crowd, I noticed my contact was missing, and was supposed to call 1-800-CONTACT about my failure to keep an eye on things. Assuming this was glitched, I backed out to you before the start of the mission and things went swimmingly. Apparently, if I was playing an explosives build, I could use Silly Putty and a Joy Buzzer to blow away the president in a practical joke. But for now, it's playing with him like a cat chasing a nuclear-powered LED and watching what's left of him get launched into orbit. Of course, I had to dispatch the edgy boys as well, threading the needle, timing their shots, using some as unwitting landmines, then they collectively become the embodiment of Joe Biden and forget where I am, despite the beam of light pointing directly at my location, so I could loot them for a bit, then become shunned before I leveled up. I kill the rest on the outside, equip my pajamas, and then go into the offices where nobody seemed to give a shit that the president was just killed, then buy a few more thousand energy cells. With that done and nothing else remaining before the Battle of Hoover Dam, I still wanted to get the 50 star caps to complete the challenge. So I went to the place it all began, to loot the vending machines that had already been cracked open, so I had 28 caps, so I went to Nellis where there was two sitting on the table. Next target was Repcon HQ, so I went to the Grubbing Gulp, but the vendors there started attacking me before some road pirates wanted my booty, and their firepower made me a not-so-jolly roger. With NCR armor, they wouldn't spawn, but they were still set to come after me. I made it to Repcon and got a decent bonus on sales. Moved to Bob and found one. Found another in the gift shop. Stumbled my way up the stairs with skill and luck, where two more were on the ground. Got a special gun on the way out with even more ammo. Stopped at Good Springs once again to convert my ammo and get two more star caps from the houses nearby. Went to 188 Trade Post just to make absolutely sure I didn't miss one there. Then I said hi to Veronica's obliviously dumb face before seeking out Chapo's Cap Shack, which was fucking horrible because these pieces of twisted hellspawn occupy the area and made whatever horrible person invented them be subjected to them in his every nightmare. Eventually, made my way into the cellar and got three more stars to my stripes, which are actually leftover lesions from all the Cazador stings. Now at 40 caps, I chuck some drinks and get nothing. I go to the lake, then board the boat to interrupt the hot girl's summer, and received one more for my efforts. Still at the lake, I had to search for the remains of someone's attempt at jackass for three more caps. Got an early screen for the live-action Little Mermaid. With 44 star caps, I once more go to Nipton, told boxcars to look at the flowers, then God saw fit to send two scorpions as punishment, and I know that they were from God because one was phased between reality, life, and death. 
prompted another ranger raid for some stupid reason, where using cover got me pinned in while the high ground worked in their favor. And my armor meant jack and shit to them, but I turned it around to get them eventually. Walked along some traders until some homeboys wanted to trade blows, so I stood out of it until the Leather Pants Alliance won. Continued to Barney's Sanctuary, and then got two more caps, which brings me up to 46. On the streets of Sloan, I get attacked by the powdered ganaches. One of them picked up an active camo, though we didn't pay attention to the time limit. Killed two more down the road and leveled up, and picked the tag skill, which was stupid. I should have picked the better criticals, but it wouldn't let me go back, so I just stuck with it and leveled up speech. Laid waste to the shanty and permanently fixed Snuffle's leg injury. Went to the mess hall and thankfully missed, otherwise I would have gotten a warm radioactive breeze from her atomic decay. Found another star cap. There was supposed to be one at the Mojave outpost, but the whole thing was a bust and I got attacked by another ranger hit squad, so let's just move on. Wooed some sarsaparilla cases and got one more out of a drink. Combined that with two laying around at the emergency rail yard and it's a done deal. I returned to Festus. Failed the Legend of the Star. Had to console the door open again and then learned a valuable lesson. Returned to Caesar. Interrupted the Legate's interesting evening, and then began the second battle of Hoover Dam, which really at the start is just me at long range atomizing the soldiers, which would probably work a bit better if I didn't have an army with me drawing aggro. I watched the bird lay her eggs all over the place, and though the fire is imaginary, the bullets from the NCR's long guns are not. I shoot at the sniper and find him cowering, so I execute him. As we move up, the Great Cons run interference, much to my surprise. Inside the offices, we make the final long march deeper into the institutions of the dam's defenses, with rangers and troopers of all kinds and caliber. Ready to waste my ammo, my stim packs, and my weapon condition, which is getting dangerously low. Well, I forgot to get some more repair kits. While in the second to last room, a rocket launcher posed the biggest threat, so I took it out of play. Then he switched to glorious melee, so I deleted that weapon as well. Then ran to confront General Oliver. While these soldiers were easier to kill, the danger close environment made it a hassle until my reinforcements came to assist. In the second room, there are many traps laying around with some rangers that can quickscope their 50 cows, and trying to kill them as they run around seemed nearly impossible, so I had to try and mostly fail to avoid the landmines. I inch closer and closer until I'm close enough to try to make a run for it, but they have enough landmines on the stairs to generate a 4.0 earthquake. Mines, mines, and more mines except mine fill my mind, so if they don't mind, I mine their mines, and holy shit, there's so many fucking mines. Trying to shoot the fucking ranger feels nearly impossible, so I had to save enough times that you can make a flip book out of the thumbnails. Thank god he just runs off and now I can face General Oliver and his entire heavy armor division. Dying because I got stuck, a lot of shooting, and while actually having to be careful and plan my attacks, I take General Oliver's hat and hide behind his desk until my gun finally breaks. I don don Oliver's hat in order to confuse the enemy so I can flee and have the legate save me. Except it turns out the Legion don't want no bitches, so they want me to kill everything in the room. This might be controversial, but I add 10 weapon repair kits to my inventory, but since I can't equip broken guns to fix it, I reluctantly reload a save and do the same thing. Now, my thought process is that I'm clearly at the end. The only thing stopping me is the fact that my gun was nigh broken condition by the time I reached the end point. If I had bought weapon repair kits beforehand, or if I had just ran past more enemies, I probably would have been fine, but I can't properly judge this decision. I kill all the bears, then I get killed by some random fucking explosion through the floor, then do it all the fuck over again. Then fucking finally I save, go back to the legate who tells me the war is over. And I guess maybe I beat Fallout New Vegas with only the pew pew. This is a hard one for me to call for the reasons I already laid out. So I'll leave it up to you, the people, to make the call on if it was a victory or not in the comments section. Shout out to my longtime viewers for giving me the energy to finish making these, and thank you to all of you for watching this video. I hope you liked it, and if you did, please let me know in the comments section below. If you didn't, please dislike it and leave a comment as well. I hope you all have a great one. Harshin out.